Hi everyone! In today's video we're going to cover all the basic oil painting supplies you will need to start painting. This is actually a huge topic and it has a lot of information included so I'll try to keep it short and informative so if you have any extra questions and you'd like to see me elaborate in any of the aspects just let me know in the comments below. I'll split all the supplies in three basic categories. The first one is the absolute basics that you definitely need to start painting. The second category is the good to have, the ones that will help you, that will make you have an easier time painting but are not completely necessary. And the third category is the things that you probably already have at home and will need to get, you know, get in the studio and start using them with oils. So, starting with the very basics, apparently if you want to start oil painting you will need some kind of oil paint. There are several types of oil paints. There are the traditional oil paints, which are the ones that I am using currently, like these ones. They are the Artist Colors from Winsor Newton. There are water-soluble oil paints that are considered to be a bit less toxic and you don't need to use uh, some kind of thinner with them, so it's a choice. And there are the Alkyd oil paints, which are drying much faster and uh, I haven't used them either, so I don't have much of an opinion on that but I chose to go with the traditional oil paints and use some kind of medium to make them dry faster. I'll talk about that a little bit later. As usual, you have a lot of choices here to make that are mainly personal preference, so I'm not gonna get too much into it. You can choose student quality oil paints or artist quality oil paints. The light fastness is usually the bigger difference amongst them, so it depends on whether you wanna sell your art or it's just for practice or you just want quality products anyway, how much money you're about to spend and you can afford. All of this is just personal choice, I'm not gonna get into the details. Uh, the same choice you can make is how many colors you want to buy. You can obviously start with just three colors and black and white and go with it and create something beautiful. You can even go with just black and white if you don't want to spend too much and start with monochrome just to get used of, to the process and how oil painting works and see if you like it or not before you spend any more money on it. If you do want to go the extra mile and get many colors to have the choice, keep in mind that oil paints are usually either opaque or transparent or somewhere in between. So it's good to have a combination of the two depending on the techniques you're going to use and you're going to like. The opaque uh, colors are usually good for the base layers or for those people who like to go all in wet on wet on one layer and finish a piece within a day or two. The transparent colors are usually for glazing for multiple layers to tint the colors to change things up. So uh, with practice and uh, once you get used to it you'll probably decide yourself which way you want to use and which colors you prefer, what type of paint you prefer, but if you want to see them all at once at the start just Pick some opaque and some transparent and see the differences between them and what you prefer working with. Apart from paints, obviously you need some surface to paint on. Uh, you can make your own, a lot of artists do. I am not one of them, I just like to buy stuff and have them ready to go. If you want something simple just to start with and practice without being too expensive and uh, a huge investment, you can get one of those canvas pads. They are like drawing pads but with canvas, they are ready to use and you can have uh, practice pieces on them, you can just start and see if you like painting or not before you invest on something better than that. After that you can obviously get some canvas. There are different qualities of canvases, cotton, linen, uh, archival, not archival, you can find cheap canvases just for practice uh, even at your local store probably. and. Later on, if you want to invest in something better and you want to start selling your work, you can make some research and upgrade your, your materials slowly. I usually use these as well. They are gesso boards. They're actually like cardboards that are being primed for oil painting and uh, they are smoother than canvas. So it's also a choice if you don't want your work to uh, have the texture of the canvas and you want some smooth surface, they are a very good choice for that reason. You have your paints, you have your surface, you need brushes to put the paint on the surface. There are lots of choices here as well. First one is synthetic versus natural. We all know the debate among that. I won't go into details. You do your own thing. You choose what you want to choose. There are different shapes, flats, 
filberts. They're not supposed to be like that. I just don't take good care of them. Ango liners and so much more. I suggest you take at least one of each and try and see what works best for your type of work and the amount of detail you want to put in and you know the type of art you prefer creating. I'd say that it's best to go with firmer brushes instead of the softer ones that are mostly for watercolor. Uh, for oil you want your brush to be a little bit firmer and a, bit, a little bit shorter so that it holds the paint well and it pushes it into the canvas or the surface better. After testing a few brands, not the very expensive ones, but especially if you're a bit lazy like me and you don't always clean your brushes very well and you don't put them in soap and stuff, um, I ended up getting a bunch of those cheap makeup brushes they were like five euros for the whole set and i bought two sets and if a brush goes bad i just throw it away i don't feel bad about it i find that they work perfectly fine for my taste and my practice so i would suggest it's a good maybe tip to get one for yourself since they are so inexpensive and even if you don't end up using them for uh, your paint you can just use them for your makeup or for you know give it to your girlfriend for her makeup if you're not wearing makeup <laughs> next up a palette somewhere to put your paint on mix it and take it from there to your canvas i never bought a real uh, palette i'm just using this uh, uh glass from an old frame i'm just putting my paint on top of that i clean it while the paint is still wet and it's very easy to clean and um Oh, if you want to oil paint generally takes days to dry so if you have it on your palette like that and you don't want to throw away the excess paint you can put it in a container like this one with the it's the ones we put food inside you know they seal and then put it in your fridge it's not going to get any air out of here so you're safe with that and the cold from the fridge will keep your paints wet so that you don't have to throw them away if you're going to work again in the same painting a couple of days later or three or four it can hold up to a week like that some paint so yeah that's an extra tip for you here last couple of things that are necessary to start uh, one is oms odor of mineral spirits or any kind of spirit to clean your brushes with some people use it to thin their paint as well i just don't i only use a medium which is it's not something that's necessary, but it's something that I strongly suggest you try out because it has saved me so much time. This one, the liquid. It's uh, obviously any brand will do. I just have this one because I don't have access to many materials here in Greece and Windsor & Newton sells in Greece. So that's why most of my stuff are from Windsor & Newton, uh, even though I like them anyway. The medium makes the paint dry faster, which means that you don't have to wait weeks in order to go back with the next layer. Um, in the summer, in the heat, uh, with medium, the paint can dry within 24 hours at least, maybe less than that. So you can make the first layer in one day and go over the next and the paint will be completely dry. I think that if you're not patient and you don't want an oil painting to take months to complete, this one is a lifesaver. At least I don't. I know that I wouldn't be liking oil painting so much if I had to wait. So the medium has saved my life. Also, if you're working on thin layers and you only use medium in your painting, it minimizes the lean over the fat over lean rule for oil painting. So you don't run any danger of your paint cracking and such. I strongly suggest you take it. It's in between the absolutely must-haves and the good to have so i'll put it just here and finish this chapter of the things that you absolutely need to have in order to start painting. now moving on to the simpler stuff the ones that you don't necessarily need at least not at the start and uh, but obviously you can get them they will help you they will make it easier on you they're just not necessary one of them the first is varnish varnishing your painting in the end is something that not everyone does i think that it's a good thing to do it protects your painting from the atmospheric um, pollution it protects it better from 
the light and generally it keeps it safe. It also brightens up the colors. I think that most of you will have seen a couple of videos from varnishing and the way the color brightens up once you varnish the painting, especially if the varnish is gloss. So it's something that it's beautiful and I think it's good to have. If you start just for practice and on a canvas pad or with just a couple of colors and you're just starting out, obviously varnish is not necessary. You don't need to varnish everything, only the things that you're going to sell or the ones that you want to hang on your own walls. So it's not a must have. Most varnishes suggest that you wait at least six months, three to six months for your painting to be completely dry before you apply them, apart from the Gambar. Uh, it's from Gambling the one that I just showed you, and it's the only one that says that if the paint is dry to the touch, you are safe to use it. And it's the one I'm using. I ordered it from the US and I paid a fortune for it just for this reason, because I am not patient enough to wait for a painting for six months before I can uh, put it up for sale and send it off to someone who has asked for it. So it's up to you whether you want to varnish your paintings or not but it's a good to have and it's generally good to furnish your paintings. One more thing that most oil painters and painters in general have are a, some type of easel. It's easier to work if your surface is uh, horizontal, uh, not flat on your desk at least, but it's possible to paint flat on your desk. Just make sure you don't make a mess, just put some um, newspaper maybe on top of your desk so that the paint doesn't go any, everywhere. Uh, but it's not 100% necessary. It's good to have, it's nicer to work like that, but it's not necessary. Uh, there are the big easels that other artists have that stand on the floor and uh, go high as high up as you want. They're sturdy, they're big and heavy, but they take up, take up a lot of room. I didn't have room for that, so I have a table easel. It's small, it fits my paints inside, and it can take pretty big uh, paintings on them, so it's not limiting in that uh, way. Uh, it's uh, not that expensive as a normal easel and it can do the job just fine, at least for start. That was it with the things that you probably need to go out and buy. Now moving on to the things that you probably have at home around and you can just use them to help you out with oil painting. Uh, first one is some kind of paper towel or any kind of normal towel, actually, if you don't want them anymore at the house, uh, to, to uh, clean your brushes. Um, you don't need to clean your brushes all the time while you're painting, so wiping them out on some kind of towel, it's good to keep you going with the same brush without dipping it into the mineral spirits. One more thing that might help you, especially if you have pets at home, dogs or cats, uh, is these tweezers. They are the ones that we use to pluck our eyebrows and uh, it can be a lifesaver if you have uh, hair sticking into your palette or your painting or your paint and even though it's best to just clean your space as much as possible and not have the uh, hair surrounding you, we all know that with pets at home this is pretty much impossible and once in a while something will get stuck within our paint or our painting and the tweezers help get it out safely and not let it in there forever. You need a jar to put your uh, paint thinner inside uh, to clean your brushes. There are jars that are made for this reason. They have a metallic uh, net on at the bottom that lets you clean your brushes easier, but it's not necessary. You can take any jar you have at home, make sure it has a lid to close that, so that it doesn't smell and the fumes don't go out in your room or your studio, uh, but it's something that you probably already have at home if you don't want to use a one that's made specifically for this reason. You need the container that I showed you to put your paints into the fridge, which is a food container. So it's something that you all uh, already have at home, probably. Uh, you probably need specific clothes for painting because whether we want it or not, sometimes paint will get on our clothes and it's not always easy to take it out. So don't paint on your good clothes, just have some clothes that are specifically for this reason when you're painting and you're in your studio. For the same reason, you may need something to protect your surrounding area, depending on how messy you are when you work. Uh, you may need newspaper or some kind of, of cloth to put it on your desk or on your floor. 
uh, it depends on the way you paint and the way you work so that's up to you to see if you want some how to protect your surrounding area and i think that with all of that we probably have mentioned everything that you need to start painting with oils i know it's a lot of information but if you go back and watch it one by one i i'm pretty sure you knew already most of that i just gave a couple of tips for each and put them all in one place so that you can find them um, as i said at the start if you need any help specifically with some of that or if you need an extra video for specifically one of the things that you need to buy please let me know in the comments below i would love to help you out and i would love to make extra videos on these subjects if it's something you feel that would be interesting and helpful for you now if you liked this video and you found it useful please leave it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more like that in the future consider subscribing to my channel i will be uploading weekly and i will try to answer all of your questions and help you out as much as i can and uh, i hope to see you on the next video until then, be safe, be happy and keep going for your dreams.